Hey everyone, my name is Christopher Fraser from FraserEffects.com and today we're going to be looking at how to create this beautiful planet effect inside of Blender. It is highly realistic and physically accurate and it's pretty straightforward to set up. In addition, I'm going to be showing you some of the best planet textures on the internet and how you can get your hands on them right now, so stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's get started. In our Blender scene here, our brand new Blender scene, we're just going to go ahead and delete everything. And I'm going to start off by adding a UV sphere. Now, an important thing about when we create this is that we want to bring the segments and the rings up by a lot. I'll set the segments to 128 and then your rings to half of whatever your segments are. So in this case, 64. So we've set our segments to 128 and our rings to 64. The reason why we've done this instead of just adding a subdivision surface modifier is when you add the subsurf modifier, you can get some UV stretching on the poles and it looks pretty ugly and we don't want that. So just by setting up those segments in the beginning, we're setting ourselves up for better success. Next, we will right click and shade smooth and we can get to work. I'll go into rendered view and I've already got the sky texture set up, but I want to delete that because we are in space. Set your exposure to about negative 4.5 and then add in a sunlight. We can rotate this and set the strength to match the real life intensity of the real sun. Set it to 175. That's about what you want the value to be. I've done a lot of math on this, trust me. And to get our planet set up, we'll just open up a panel here on the side. Go to the shader editor, close this panel by hitting N and create a new material. Now you can use a number of different types of assets for this, but I'm going to be using some of the textures from the brand new Planet Textures Volume 2 that you can buy on FraserEffects.com. This is a collection of high quality 6K planet textures. These textures come in a variety of different categories, including alien, craters, desert, gas giants, ice, lava, red planet, snow, terra, wasteland, and water. And there are some additional texture types like rings, miscellaneous planet maps, clouds, and suns. And these are all gonna be super helpful for creating our planet scene here today. So I'm just gonna pick one that I like. In this case, I think we will go for the red planet type. And I'll just drag in our textures here. The cool thing about these textures is that they are based on real life planet textures, scans of real planets. So you can see that they've got a really nice realistic quality to them. I'll just drag in my roughness map, make sure that it's set to non-color data, bring in our normal map, set that to non-color data as well, and then just add the normal map node to complete it. Now that is the basic surface of our planet all completed. But if you want to go a step further, you can use the included displacement map. Now, if we also set this to non-color, we can use a displacement node. By plugging our color into the height here and the displacement into the output, go to material settings, under settings, change the displacement to displacement only. Now that seems, wow, that is, that really did us in. Uh, let's change the scale to something like 0.01. And then maybe we will add a subdivision surface modifier after all. If you look at the top, you can see that some of that texture stretching is pretty bad, but if we angle it just right, it shouldn't be too big of a problem. If you want to, you can change the feature set to experimental. And back under the modifiers tab, click adaptive subdivision. This is going to give us some more fidelity to our model when it is applying the subdivision based on how close you are to it. And we can see that we're getting some really nice dimension there. I'm going to go ahead and change maybe the scale of the displacement a little bit more and change the dicing scale to be a little bit smaller for our viewport rendering. And that looks pretty nice, actually. I can set that back up to say one. So it'll be one pixel for the final render. But for now, that's looking good. Next, we need a nice layer of clouds. So we're just going to go ahead, take this sphere and duplicate it. And then we'll just right click to reset the transform. Make sure to remove the subdivision modifier and just scale this up ever so slightly. Next, we'll take our material, rename surface, and duplicate it by clicking this number two. And we're going to call this clouds. Now, I actually want to delete pretty much everything here. We're going to go back and we're going to take in a clouds texture. I'm going to take clouds four from the planet textures. And we're actually going to plug this into the into the alpha channel. And you'll see what this is going to do is this is going to create some very basic clouds. Now, they don't look very great at the moment. And that's because we need to do a little bit more work on our shader here. We'll actually go to our base sphere, turn off the subdivision just for now. Maybe we'll take our clouds, scale them up a little bit more. So this is looking okay, but it's really not looking 
all that great actually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add in a gamma node right before the alpha. We can set this to something like say 0.5. And you can see that this is gonna thicken up the clouds a little bit. We're also gonna go ahead and add in a bump node and plug this in. And if we just control shift left click with node wrangler enabled, we can bring the distance way, way down, maybe 0 0.005 and get ourselves a nice bump map for these clouds. That's starting to look pretty sweet and they're looking a lot more nicely cloud-like. But I wanna take this a little bit more towards Geonosis from Star Wars. So what we're, I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna take the clouds color I'm going to keep it bright, but I'm going to bring it a little bit more towards yellow. And that's just going to help to integrate it a little bit more with sort of the look that we have for our planet here. And that's looking okay. Don't worry about this weird halo around the planet for now. We're going to get to that a little bit later. But for now, this is looking pretty decent. What I think we want to do, though, to add a little bit more depth is maybe we can take our planets or our clouds here, scale them down just a touch and set the gamma back to one. Then we're gonna duplicate our sphere, scale it up ever so slightly, and then press R, R, and then just move our mouse randomly to get a random rotation for that second sphere. This is gonna create another layer of depth to our clouds, and it's gonna add another layer of shadow to our clouds as well. Next, we'll just duplicate the clouds one more time, right click to cancel the transform, R, R, move it around, scale it up ever so slightly, and that's given us a couple of different layers to work with. Now, right now, the clouds, I think, are looking pretty decent, but we're still missing something very important, and that is the atmosphere to our planet. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to our original sphere. Once again, we're going to duplicate it again, right-click to cancel, scale it up a little bit until it's bigger than all of our clouds and our planet, and then go just a little bit bigger. We'll remove the subdivision surface modifier again and duplicate this material one more time and call this atmosphere. Now we're going to delete everything that we have here and we're going to add in a principled volume shader. Plug this into the volume. What we actually want to do for the color is we're going to use a black body node. We're going to set this to something like 15,000 or I think that's 150,000. Plug that into the color. And this is going to give us somewhat of an accurate representation of an atmosphere, but we're not there yet. What you may notice is we've got this weird thick halo around the whole planet, but we want it to be more of like a glow, sort of a gradient. So to achieve that effect, we're just going to add in a gradient texture, set it to spherical, and control shift left click to preview. We can also, with node Wrangler enabled, hit control T to add in a texture coordinate and mapping node automatically. And we'll just take our location and bring it into the negatives to about negative 0.5. In fact, we're going to bring it back to exactly negative 0.5. And what we're just going to do here is add in a color ramp after the fact, and this is going to be our density. Now what we can do is we can set this to constant and we can just move this around until we find the values that we're looking for. So we want to just bring this until we find sort of the outside of that glow. In this case, about 0.494. So we want to select the black handle and change the position to 0.494. Maybe even 0.4935. And then we want to take our white handle and move it just back a little bit until the atmosphere disappears. 0.508 should do the trick. Maybe we'll even go a little bit farther. 0 0.509, 0 0.51, 0.51. We've got 0.493 and 0.51, and we'll change that to linear. It still doesn't quite look like what we want, like the result we want. So we're going to add in another color ramp so we can get even more specific. So again, we'll do the same thing with our constant values. Go to about, I said about there. We'll just copy that over and take our white handle, move it back again until we just about don't have any left. And we'll set that to linear. Now what we can do is we can take something like a gamma node and bring up the gamma value to something like 5. And then follow that up with a math node set to multiply. And we can set that multiply value as about as high as we want. We'll just zoom out here to see the whole planet. Until we get an adequate amount of atmosphere. And now you're going to see that we've got this nice thick atmosphere here. We've kind of eliminated that weird halo effect from earlier. 
you can see that we're getting a nice a nice line along the terminator line here where it's turning a bit of a green orange color as it should and that sort of glow that fall off haze is nice and smooth which looks a lot like a real planet now I told you I was going for Geonosis from Star Wars. And the thing about Geonosis is the sky isn't blue there. It's actually yellow. So what we want to do to get an accurate representation of a yellow sky is we could take the black body node and bring the temperature down to a, something like 5500. But what I think we're going to do instead is add a hue saturation node. That way, by playing around with the hue value, you can get whatever color sky you want. So if you want a green sky, for example, you can set it that way and you can see that it behaves realistically over here by the terminator line you can see a little hint of purple because the sunset which would be right on that line would be purple which is nice and physically accurate so we can just set the value of this to say one and that's going to give us a nice orange yellow color for our sky you can even see if we look at it at an angle the reflection as though we're looking at it from the sunset is a little bit blue you can see if we invert it the reflection with a blue sky is a little bit yellow, which is exactly what we want. So this is working physically accurately. So we've got a wonderful planet here with a physically accurate atmosphere, some really pretty clouds. And if we come in here and turn this subdivision modifier on, some nice displacement. What is the final layer of interest that we can add to a planet like this? Well, Geonosis, for all my Star Wars fans out there, has rings. And luckily for us, rings are included in the Planet Textures Volume 2 pack. You can find an example of a Saturn ring texture on Solar System Scope, which I will link down below. But you can find a wider variety of rings from Planet Textures Volume 2. So we will add a circle. And under the Add Circle menu, we will change the vertices to 128. Just to smooth it out more. And then we'll scale it up. And we will tab into edit mode. We're going to press E. And then to avoid moving this around like that, we're going to right click. And then we're going to hit S to scale it down. Now this is exactly what we want. If we hit A for all and split this view here, we can set this to a UV image editor just to make sure that we're getting proper UVs, which in this case we're not. So if we just hit U and click reset, we should have proper UVs for our rings. But there's only one way to find out. Create a new material, call it rings, and drag in the ring texture of your choice. Let's try rings 10. We're going to plug this into the alpha channel. And we've got ourselves some pretty nice looking rings. If you want to invert the direction, you can go into edit mode, press A in the UV editor, and press R180. And then you can see that we've got essentially a flipped version of those rings. These rings are looking pretty sweet, but we're getting this weird blackout effect as we look through it here. So what I think we're going to do is we're just going to go into our render tab here, find our light paths and make sure that our transparent bounces are nice and high. You might even need to set it, them up as high as 12. And now you can see that that looks a little bit more realistic, but I'm not entirely happy yet with the coloring. I want to add in something. I want to add in a little bit of spice. So the first thing we can do is we can add the color to the base color. Now that's going to create this sort of darkening effect where the dark parts are going to get even well darker. So we'll just add in a mix RGB node and plug that texture into the factor. Then we can use this almost like an After Effects tint effect and just change the two values until we get something a little bit more rocky looking. Yeah, that's a little bit nicer, but it still feels a little bit too smooth. So I think what we'll do is we will add in a noise texture. Now, what we can do because, because of our UVs is if we hit Control-T to add in these nodes, we can plug in the UV texture coordinate into the vector and then change our X value to zero. Now you can see that we've got these randomized streaks all the way around the circle. Now all we need to do is bring the scale way down to get these little, these fine little lines. We're going to plug this into a separate mix texture. And we'll just change this to some interesting colors. We can even add an RGB curves node if we want to add in a little bit of manual contrast. And then with a third mix RGB node, we can set this to a blend mode like overlay just to add a little bit more interest to those colors. Next, when we look at our final shader, you're going to see that we get some, we get just a little bit more detail with those lines. We can actually go even further with this effect if we change the detail all the way up and bring the roughness up. You can see that the detail gets really minuscule. 
we can make it subtler just by bring, bringing down the overlay value. But, but we're still going to see these nice fine lines, which I think just helps to add a little bit of texture. But it's not necessary, certainly not for every scene. Next, we can just take the rings, rotate them a little bit, and we've got ourselves a nice looking planet. Remember, all of this is made possible by the brand new Planet Textures Volume 2 pack from FraserFX.com. So make sure to go to that link down in the description to pick up this pack for yourself. But if you'd like a bit of a faster way to make nice looking planets, you can go to this video tutorial right here to see how I used this free planet shader to create some amazing planets in only a minute's worth of time. So go check that out if you're interested.